Hey everyone, it's Dark Knight Admin. Today we're going to talk about the upcoming changes to permission sets and profiles. As always, I'm Jake. I work at Penrod. I'm MVP still, and I run the Milwaukee Dev Group and the Milwaukee Salesforce Editor Group. All right, let's get into So parts of the profiles are leaving. After the Spring 26 release, major profile features will move to permission sets. So we have some time to think about what we need to do here, but a lot of new features that were enabled in Spring 23 are going to help us plan that transition. Just remember, the longer you wait to make this and you don't address the issue, the greater risk you're going to be at. So profiles aren't going away. They're still going to be around, but they're going to be very limited with the can actually control. They can control your login hours and IP ranges, your record types and app defaults. So any of your defaults, profiles still can control those things. And your page layout assignments are still going to be dictated by your profile. I think Dynamic Forms can play a bigger role in the future, but you can still utilize profiles to set up the uh, assignment that you want based on the profile or record type. So profile, record type, still can control picture lateral assignments, and you can still set your defaults and record type access at the profile level. So some things that are gonna be moving over to the permission sets are your user permissions, your system and app permissions, your object permissions, that's your object, you no know, read, create, update, and delete, your basic CRUD. Field permissions, so your field level security is moving over there. Your tabs, your record types, not your defaults like we just discussed, but you can add additional record types to uh, a user based on the uh, permission set. Connected act access, Apex classes, and Visual Force pages, and customer permissions also are being moved over to permission sets. So just remember, time is not on your side. Overhauling the profiles for the conversion to permission sets is going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a huge undertaking. For existing orgs, this could be considered its own project. You're going to be doing a lot of work to move everything from profiles over to permission sets. You're going to put a lot of effort in there, so you're going to want to account for that and give yourself adequate time. If you're a new org, uh, using the profiles to actually, you're going to have to you know, convert over, so you might as well start util utilizing permission sets right from the beginning. You don't want to get stuck in that transition period again. You're going to do all your work all over again. So start making that move over to permissions that's right away. I would say you want to start looking at this as an immediate need because yes, it's supposed to be in spring 26. That's going to come right around the corner. And some of this stuff is going to take a lot of effort to go through and organize and set up for yourself. A quick review of profiles and permission sets. Just remember a user has a profile. They have permission sets and also permission set groups. The cumulative of all those is their total access to the uh, org profile like i said currently controls a lot of stuff and then we used to just add on additional permission sets and permission set groups as we see fit profiles are losing a lot of their access it's all moving over to permission sets so the model as you see is still going to be very relevant just most of that it's going to be sitting around the permission sets and permission set groups just one thing uh let's also review the permission set groups the permission set group is a collection of permission sets so you can add permission sets to a permission set group. And then when you add that permission set group to a user or assign that permission set to a user, their permission set group to a user, the permission sets that are in that group will also be assigned to the user underneath that group. Another cool feature of permission set groups is that you can mute, which means you're allowed to uh, build a muting permission that applies to that group. And that group will then have that, those permissions muted from them. So that means they won't have access. So in permission set one, two, and three, let's say they all granted delete access to the account record and we created a muting permission that removes the, the delete access, the delete access will be removed from this group. So this, if you have this group applied to you, you won't be able to delete accounts if you have this permission set group and only this permission set group. Remember the mute permission only applies to the group. It doesn't apply to the user. So if they gain access to another permission set outside of the group, they could additionally, they could gain that access back. Just, just as a reminder, there are some limitations to permission set groups. You can have up to 100 permission set groups, permission sets in a permission set group. If you're hitting that limit, I have a lot of questions for you of why you have 100 permission sets that you need to add to a permission set group. You may want to rethink your strategy there. Um, if your org has a large number of permission sets, using permission set groups might help improve your performance. When viewing, viewing permission set groups in the list view, no actions are available in the list view dropdown. Not nothing major there. 
If including session based permission sets in a permission set group, the permission sets in them do not require session based activation for user uh, user assigned to the group. And when a permission set is part of a group, you can still assign the individual permission set apart from the permission set to specified users as needed. So you can take that permission set that you have in that permission set group and out, uh, assign it to a user just straight up outside of the group. That could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you have your permission set set up. You may be wondering what are some of the benefits of a permission set. So right now you can assign field level security to a permission set when creating a field. This is something you have to enable. I don't recommend turning this on yet until you have your process figured out. So you can do this. I wouldn't recommend turning it on. Otherwise, if you don't have your permission set set already, when you turn this on, you can only assign two permission sets. You can't assign it to, to the profile. So you have to go back and modify the profiles to update that field level security. So don't turn it on until you're ready for it. You can also set the expiration date for permission sets. This is great if you need to give out that you know, delegated admin permission to a user so that you can be an admin while you're away. You can give it to them for that superior time, then we should take that access away automatically. You don't have to go back, log in, and remove the permission set. You can just expire the permission set for that user and then they no longer have access to it. I think they see that as a great benefit to a lot of permission sets out there where you need to give limited access to a user with a permission set. So for the conversion model, basically making taking your profiles and moving them over to permission sets, I see a couple of different models. I see the one for one model. So for every profile you have, you create a permission set. I also see the one for, for one group. So for every profile you have, you create a permission set group. I also see a custom model where you can customize everything however you see fit and then utilize that however you need. There's pros and cons to any of the, all the models, as always. I think each individual organization is going to have to identify what they want. And there can be additional ones in here that we haven't been identified yet. Like I said, this is the beginning of a new era. We have to think our process through here. And this, these are some of the ideas that I've come up with. The one for one model is probably the easiest to you know, understand and comprehend. Essentially, you take all the permissions you have in your profile, move them over to a permission set, call the same thing pretty straightforward. Some things to think about with the one for one model, if you have a lot of profiles, this can be a lot of conversions that you have to do. One of the upsides is you do have access to the converter profile to permission set tool, get you up and running. You can easily take a profile, convert it to a permission set and have what you need to go right away. With this model, I think this is gonna be the fastest way to replicate what you have. So if you are procrastinating, you wait to the very end, this may be the model you choose because it's gonna get you to where you need to go the fastest. May, may not be the most efficient, but it'll get you to where you need to go uh, going forth. You can always use automation to auto assign permission sets based on a profile name. So if we have a flow and we have our profile name called ABC and we have a permission set called ABC, we can use some automation to basically say, hey, if the profile is ABC, assign the ABC permission set to it and then automatically do it. You can use flows to do a lot of different cool things. One of them is creating the uh, assigned permission sets based on a profile name. We could automate that process. With the one for one group model, this is where we take a permission set group that matches your profile, use a combination of permission sets that add up to your, your group. And what I mean by that is, taking the, looking at all your profiles and building like groupings of things. It could be individual object access. It could be a particular profile type of, or persona. It could be like a sales persona. It could be a service persona. They have access to a certain amount of things. You can create those individual parts and then reuse them in other permission set groups. So I could have the sales um, persona permission set and an active sales manager per person on that. I can add both of those to a permission set group if I wanted to. And I can reuse the sales one for another group if I wanted to. So I could keep adding those individual ones over and over again to as part of the groups. Reduce the number of permission sets I have, but I just have additional permission set groups. So the permission set group matches what the profile has, but not all the permission sets are little components that you can plug, push in and play into different permission set groups. 
And like I said, one of the benefits of permission groups is you have that muni permission. So if you happen to grant additional access with one of the permission sets within that group, you can take that away. Uh, if you do go down this route, I recommend sticking with permission set groups and don't assign additional permission sets outside of the group unless you need to. You may even go down the route of a naming convention for your permission sets to say uh, if the permission set is for a group and if the permission set is for a standalone. So if you have a, a permission set that's assigned for a group, maybe you put no GP or just call a group at the end of it. So when you sign it out, you know that you, you should only send that one to a permission set group. So you, you shouldn't assign that as to an individual, just a way to easily look at a user and see what access they have and if they have additional access, maybe they shouldn't. You could use that one for one method too for your launch but just remember you can also add additional permissions to a permission set group like Health Cloud and Final Service. Any of those additional permission sets that you may need to add, you can add those in there as well to a permission set group. So you could have your one for one model for the permission sets, but put them in a permission set group and then have your additional permission sets that you need to add to that individual user as well. And then you automate that way. That way you don't have to add in all the different permission sets. You can just add in the one group and then you, they have all the access that they need. And, cuts down the admin time that you need. Just a reminder, there is a limit for groups that you can only have up to 100 permission sets to a group. Like I said, you can also use automation to auto assign the permission set based on the profile name. So on this one, we, we can assign the permission set group to a profile based on profile names. You can't stop the same concept as before, but with a permission set group on this one. The custom model, this is where we can build permission sets and you just kind of Build them however you, need, you see fit. This could be a per object model, it could be groups, it could be a combination of the two we talked about before. It could be your own model that you created, but custom is custom. And I can see this as being just overall how everything we put in there. One thing to note is that the biggest pain point is going to be in inconsistency. This makes it hard to figure out access. If it's all over the board and you have this there and that there and that there. It may yeah, it's gonna be really flexible. You can do everything you need to do really quick, but undoing it or having the two debug issues, it could be very complex and it can be a very hard process to make through. This process is also very hard to automate, so you can be adding permission sets and permission set groups to users left and right to give them the access they want. So it's not gonna be a very maintainable system. It's just gonna be a very hard system to do. Could depend on the size of your org, it may be fine. If you have a large org, I don't think going full customer, each individual user gets their own types of permission sets is going to be the best approach. You're probably going to want to rethink and design. Like I said before, this isn't the only, these aren't the only approaches that you can do. There's probably going to be additional ones that are out there. If you have any additional approaches that you think that are going to be great, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to read about them. Maybe we'll make another deck about this in the future. This is just the start. We're not there yet. We're just going to start thinking about these things and getting them going. And if you're warning about the auto assign uh, permission set, permission group that flow that I was talking about, essentially this is a little mock up of what I was thinking about would work is that when a user is created or updated, if their profile is there, we go find a permission set that matches that profile name, create a permission set assignment for that individual user based on that profile match. This is a very generic one for one. Uh, just a reminder that you can't create permission sets with the same name, permissions of groups have to be a different name than the permission set as well. You can't duplicate names. So maybe naming conventions aren't gonna be the best there. So you may have to just build out a, another way of doing this. So that I can see flow automation being a really big key in there. You could build a key to basically say, if it's this profile, do this. If it's this one, do that one. You can do things like that. You can make a very complex process for yourself.